All right, what's going on, family? Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Let's continue with 100 years of world championship fights. July 25th, 1923. Eugene Creek, Johnny Dundee, square off for the featherweight championship battle at New York's Polo Grounds, located on 155th Street in New York. Polo Grounds is where the New York Giants used to play. And at one point, the Yankees and the Giants shared the same stadium. Babe Ruth decided he wanted to be part of a stadium for the Yankees. So it became Giant Stadium, but it was the Polo Grounds. Then Giant Stadium eventually would be relocated to Rutherford, New Jersey, Rutherford Route 3. And that's where the football team would play. So Johnny Dundee and Eugene Creaky would get it on at the Polo Grounds. Johnny Dundee would defeat Eugene Creaky and he would become a featherweight champion of the world. 23 years ago, Johnny Dundee, who at the time was 18, Try to get the title away from Johnny Kilbane. Kilbane refused to give Dundee another shot. Creaky would take the title away from Kilbane. Dundee would take the title away from Creaky. This is Johnny Dundee's book. Dundee cuts Creaky to ribbons. Winning the World Featherweight Championship belt. Master Gallant Frenchman in 15 rounds by great display of boxing and hitting. Gains life ambition after 10 years. Johnny Dundee was some fighter. I have him ranked number nine, along with Tony Canzanari, who you'll be seeing later on in this series. And the Ghetto Wizard, Benny Leonard. I've showed you him during the course of this series. Let's take a look at another championship fight. August 31st, 1923, Harlem, New York's Johnny Wilson, world middleweight champion, would lose his crown to the Pittsburgh windmill, Harry Greb. Now, Greb would be the owner of the light heavyweight champion, the America's light heavyweight championship belt that he would win from Gene Tunney. 1922, and he would go down to the middleweight division and take the world middleweight championship belt from Harlem's Johnny Wilson. Phenomenal. I'll tell you, 1922-1923 was some year. I'll tell you. New middleweight champion crown as Greb defeats Wilson. And this was at the New York Polar Grounds. August 31st, 1923. Phenomenal. Greb wins middleweight championship. 
from Johnny, well, Johnny Wilson. Decision in 15 rounds. Pittsburgh boxer too speedy for Johnny in New York title bout. But Ladder puts up good battle in his game in defense and defeat. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. All right, so that fight took place August 31st, 1923. Let's move on. That was the middleweight championship belt between Johnny Wilson and Harry Greb. On right, September 14th, 1923, Luis Angel Firpo from Argentina and Jack Dempsey Manasamola. We get it on New York's Polo Grounds. More than 3,000 spectators at the New York Polo Grounds. Watch this outstanding fight. In the first round, Jack Dempsey goes out of the ring. These men are down seven times between the two. They call Louis Angel Furpo the Wild Bull of the Andes. As you can see here, Jack Dempsey out of the ring, lands into a typewriter. And what was amazing in 1922, Benny Leonard was knocked out of the ring himself. Right, let's take a, a look at another fight. There was nine total knockdowns in this fight complete. And Fibro was down for the final time. Pittsburgh Windmill, Harry Greb, and Billy Papke, he was known as the Illinois Thunderbolt. Greb is to your right, and Billy Papke is in the middle here, shaking hands. To his left, or to our left and his right, would be Charles Bud Taylor. All three of these men were champions. October 4th, 1923, Mike Matigue was the World Light Heavyweight Champion. He had just defeated Balenciki. Shaking hands with Young Stribling, Lawrence Young Stribling. That fight would go 10 rounds. It would wind up becoming a draw. It was in defense. Mike Matigue's World Light Heavyweight Championship belt. Fight took place in Newark, New Jersey. All right, let's take a look at another championship fight.
I want to stay with junk stripling for one moment. He died in a motorcycle crash. He would be Max Schmeling's first heavyweight champion title defense. The fight would go to the last round before Stribling was knocked out. He was doing very well in that fight with Max Schmeling. This is the uh, Junk Stribling scrapbook. The entire book is Junk Stribling. Let's go through a few pages and we'll move on. Okay, so Young Stribling dies. It was at the... This article was taken out of the Atlanta Journal. Tuesday evening, October 3rd, 1933. I have a lot of information on Young Stribling. This book is over a thousand pages of just Young Stribling alone. I'll share some of this with you. A lot of stuff I'm showing you, you're not going to find anywhere else. Let's continue to look a little bit more closely on Young Stripling. That's the motorcycle that he would crash with. Take a look here. Young Stripling dies. His crash hurts. Pool fatal to the fighter. Body lies in state. Just trying to give you just some slight information on Young Stripling. This is young shriveling in this newborn. The young shriveling was so regarded that they would have a cartoon section of him in the Sunday paper. And I have the entire collection. This is the first one. Here's the second one. I was able to get those two on one page. Third and the fourth one. I'll show you one more page. Every last one of them. It's the fifth one and the seventh one. Sixth one is on another page. All right, let's move on to more championship fights. Now, I'm showing you an article with Gene Tunney, who took the America's Light Heavyweight Championship belt from Battle and Seeky. He was a product of the AEF, the American Expeditionary Forces, and he lost it to Harry Greb. So let's take a look at him getting back the title from Harry Greb. Here we have Gene Tunney taking his title back from Harry Greb. March 27th. But here you have Harry Greb, who keeps his title from Johnny Wilson. He fought Johnny Wilson a second time, gave him a re return go, and he kept his crown. I'm showing you guys too many jewels here, and that's what I wanted my channel to be. And this is only the 1923s. We're going all the way up to 2000s. Grevel points Wilson and keeps the middleweight championship belt. I'm going to show you one more and I'll end this video. All right, the last fight of the year of 1923, December 17th. So Johnny Dundee and Jack Bernstein. And Dundee would regain his crown from Jack Bernstein. Rocky Marciano was born October 1st, 1923. So I gave you a perspective of 1923. 
So, so far we went from the colored champions, bare knuckle, from 1900 to 1923. So just follow me through 2000. I'm showing you a lot of jewels here. This is the Johnny Dundee scrapbook. So just keep in mind, every single fighter that I showed you, they have their own book. So I had to pull out 50 pound book, 50 pounds of a scrapbook. I have 950 of these kind of scrapbooks. Basically every fighter you can think of. And I'm showing you something just as appreciation. I'm gonna shout out to Hardline Boxing, the librarian. I know he can appreciate this. Check his channel out. He does a magnificent job showing old school information. Blood Boxing, another man that digs deep into information. My brother Curtis Anderson, Curtis Sugar. Unbelievable historian he is. Him and I talk for hours about these old time fighters. So I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Look out for 1924. All right. Be well. Peace. Dundee looking on the scale. Jack Bernstein is on the scale. Dundee is to your right looking on the scale. All right. Peace.